I have a very extensive pin collection to say the least. So have you ever wondered what my favorite pins are? Well, stay tuned because that's what we're talking about today. Hi there friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Frances and today we are going through my top 10 favorite pins in my collection as of March, 2022. This could change tomorrow. This is me just staring at my pin boards going, these are the ones that I love the most right now. So you could ask me tomorrow and I could give you 10 different pins. I could give you five different than rotate in here, but I figured I would share my top 10 pins as of this moment with you all. Some of them have cool stories. Some of them are just, I really like this character and I think this pin is awesome. So we'll give you a little bit of an overview and then we'll walk through one by one. So the first pin is a Big Albert, because Big Al has a full name. It's a Big Albert poster. It is a Walt Disney Imagineering exclusive, limited edition of 150. It's probably one of the smallest pins that I have. And um, this was a grail pin. The, any of the Country Bear WDI pins are grail pins to me. I love the Country Bears, and someday I would love to be a completist, but I don't have the money or the pin capability to become a completist right now. So when I found this for the price that I found it, I want to say I got it under $50. I don't pay, I try not to pay more than $50 for a singular pin on eBay or Mercari. So hopefully this was under that price thing. I got it sometime last year and I can't remember when I got it. I had to have it. So we know that I love Big Al. My phone case, yeah, we're bulk filming. There's still a mess over here from a previous video. My phone case is Big Al. So we know that I love the Country Bears here. So that's why this guy is here. And it's a cool poster. I like it. The next one is an older pin. I want to say it's from 2007 or 2008. It's from 2008 and it's Tinkerbell playing volleyball. So I played volleyball from the seventh grade through junior year of high school. I didn't play senior year for some politics with a coach and whatnot. And uh, growing up, Tinkerbell was kind of forced upon me as one of my favorite characters because it was my mom's favorite character. So I had a lot of Tinkerbell pins growing up. That's what the little voice in my ear, aka my mom, told me to trade when I was trading when I was younger. Um, but this pin came out and uh, we were in Disneyland at the time and my aunt bought it for me. And I love it because it's a character that I really like. I still like Tinkerbell as an adult. That hasn't changed. And then it's playing volleyball. And I don't think I've seen pins like this, that like characters playing sports and the 3D element. So that's why I like this pen. The next one, I don't know if this is an exclusive. I don't think it is. I think it's open edition, but it is from 2016 and it is the Vista Way pen. So again, open edition, not limited edition, not anything in particular, but Vista Way is where I lived during my Disney college program. And those six months are some of the specialist six months I've had in my life. Um, I will talk crap about that program and I will speak so highly of that program. It was both to me. That is what it is. That's just um, one of my remnants of my college program. So that's why it's on here. Can't really say anything else. The next one is one of the WDI limited edition of 999 Muppets Haunted Mansion pins and it is Waldorf and Statler in the Doom Buggy. Now I love the entirety of Muppet Haunted Mansion. I think it is a brilliant concept. I love the Muppets. I love Haunted Mansion. I love that thing as an entirety. But this scene where Waldorf and Statler are ghosts coming into the ballroom and the doom buggy stops like it does in the actual attraction is probably the most meta and most brilliant thing I've ever seen anyone write into anything Disney. And the fact that I have this pin to remind me of that is amazing. If I could pick all of my Muppet Haunted Mansion pins, I will, but I think this one was a good one to pick as my top one. Next, we have a stitch pin. We can't go through this without at least having one stitch pin. And it is a Stitch Crashes Disney, or no, Stitch's Magical Adventure. I always forget what this one is. And it is him on Spectrum Magic. Spectrum Magic was one of my favorite parades and I think to this day other than Paint the Night it is my favorite nighttime Disney parade. Um, I have so many fond memories of watching that parade come down Main Street as a kid with my dad, with my mom. I'm getting like teary eyed thinking about it like standing on the rocking chairs in front of Town Theater just watching Spectrum Magic go by. I can still hear that theme song vividly. I can still see all of the performers so vividly in my brain. And then there's Stitch on it, which is just one of my favorite childhood characters. So that's why that's on there. 
I really like it. Another stitch pin, a recent acquisition, but it is, it's a Disneyland Paris pin and it's stitched next to the Eiffel Tower and he's like painting and whatnot. So if you know anything about me, I took seven years of French. I studied abroad in Vichy, France uh, for three weeks in undergrad. Very, very small town, three hours south of Paris. I spent like 24 hours in Paris during that entire experience. I'm obsessed with France. I'm obsessed with the city of Paris. I've only been once, but I love it. So this is just a combination of Stitch and Paris, and that's why I love it, and that's why it ended up on here. Okay, coming down to the last four. This pin, this pin I might actually cry during. So we'll show it to you first. It's just Hula Dancing Mini. It is a cast, or it is a lanyard pin series from 2002. This is, this is where the pin trading obsession started. This is where pin trading started for me. So 2002 was probably seven at the time trading in the Christmas store in Disney Springs and I'm waiting my turn with my little lanyard. My dad and my parents always reminded me that if I was going to pin trade, I had to do it politely and like I, I couldn't interrupt anyone. I had to like say, can I please see your pins and say please and thank you and all that type of stuff. So go up to this this older uh, lady cast member and I was like, you know, may I, uh, may I please see your pins? And I thought Hula Mini looked cute as a seven year old. So I was like, can I trade for this one, please? She was like, sure. She's like, but this is a special pin. And I was like, ooh, special. You have my seven year old attention peaked. Um, so she spent a good 10, 15 minutes walking me through what lanyard pins were. If you know anything about it, lanyard pins are the precursor to cast lanyard pins, which is the precursor to hidden Mickey pins, which is the precursor to hidden Disney pins. Lanyard pins were the original pins that were given to cast members to trade and can only be found on cast member lanyards. This is one of those precursors and it's one of the oldest pins in my collection by far. Um, and she spent the time to explain, you know, what the importance was that cast members could only get them. And that's when it just became like a fun game for me going around the parks pin trading. It stopped being something to like occupy me, teach me manners and keep me not being bored going to Disney every year. I know, shocking. Um, but keep me, you know, engaged and whatnot and find it. And it became like a scavenger hunt. So every single time I'd pin trade with a new character, I might not be able to read at this point. I don't know, like I, I could read, but probably not very well. So looking for those words, having my dad double check that it said lanyard and just looking for these pins that were lanyard, cast lanyard, hidden Mickey, hidden Disney. And that's kind of where it started. And then we got into, you know, your limited edition, your double DUI, like it's, it's all bald and skyrocketed from there. But I will, I will never get rid of this pin. Uh, I don't care if it doesn't fit with any of my collections anymore. This pin just holds such a special place in my heart. And if I do another one of these videos, I'm pretty sure this one will, will stay on it again. Uh, the next one is a set of five, but I'm only showing one of them. It is the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Play It uh, 100 pin. So Who Wants to Be a Millionaire it used to be in the space where Toy Story Mania is in Disney's MGM Studios. And you used to be able to play some rounds of who wants to be a millionaire. Um, if you got an answer correct, you would go down in the hot seat and answer questions and whatnot. My dad actually got into the hot seat, so that's how he got these pins. My boyfriend is calling me, so give me one second. And we're back to our regular scheduled programming. Sorry, some stuff has been happening. I had to answer that call. Normally I would just let him go to voicemail. Okay, who wants to be a millionaire? My dad got into the hot seat. He got the hat and then the lanyard of pins. Um, I'm never trading those pins either. They're very, very unique. I'll never sell them. It was a great experience. It's a great memory. As like a seven year old, I used to just hit buttons and hope that I would get down there because I thought that'd be cool. In hindsight, I literally know none of the questions. I, in hindsight, I know the question my dad lost on now because like I like Shakespeare, but like when I was seven, how the heck was I gonna know any of that stuff? Anyway, good memory. Coming down to the last two. Um. I don't have great memories associated with the person that gave this to me, but I think it is a super cool pin and it's one of my favorite figment pins. It is a limited edition of 1500 from the Walt Disney World Resort um, it, from 2011. Figment spins and it kind of looks like an old record player. Uh, that's probably one of my coolest figment pins uh, in terms of just like movement element. It's just like a really cool design pin. I don't really want to talk about who I got it from or anything beyond that. It's not the best memories, but I really, really like that pin. 
and it made my top 10 so I must not have that much animosity to that person and last but not least is a Disney store cast member exclusive pin from when I worked there it is limited edition of 500 from the Disney store and it is a BR guest pin uh, featuring Lumiere uh, I have a love-hate relationship with my time at the Disney store. I loved being a cast member. I loved being, making magic. There were some people and some things I did not like about working at the Disney store. That's its own story. Um, but I do love that pin. Uh, it was a part of like your store had to hit certain goals and that's how you got exclusive gifts every quarter. My store hit it for, I can't remember what quarter I worked there. I only worked there for four quarters one year. But we were able to get that pin. And I really like it and I think it's really unique and not a lot of people have it so that's why I like it and then here is a quick uh, this one's falling off again um, here is a quick look at all of the pins again my top 10 as of March 2022 let me know down below what your favorite pin was here do you have any like super close memories like I do you know tearing up when you think about a pin and a memory related to you I would love to hear it down below if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up it is a great way to support my channel if you're new here please consider subscribing I do a lot of Disney and Disney pin related content and if you're already subscribed please consider hitting that bell icon so you're notified every single time I post new content I hope y'all are staying happy healthy and safe and I'll see you in the next one bye y'all and you never know what kind of figment you may come up with. Oh, here's my favorite.